John 8 verse 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. And hundreds of years before Jesus was born, the prophet Isaiah wrote in Isaiah 9, The people walking in darkness have seen a great light on those living in the land of the shadow of death. A light has dawned. And later on, For unto us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be set upon his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace there will be no end. Today we're thinking about what Jesus meant when he said, I am the light of the world. In the Bible, often it talks about light and darkness, and sometimes it doesn't mean actual light and darkness. Sometimes it talks about darkness as not knowing God, not living in his way or not following him. And light is often referred to as Jesus, as we saw through those Bible readings. In today's game, John and William and Andy um, were blindfolded and they were walking across the hall and they thought that they were standing on eggs and walking through eggs. And that's because they couldn't see. And often when you're walking in the darkness, you can't see where you're going and things can sometimes not not be what you think they are. Now there's lots of different sorts of lights we have. Now let's think about first of all the lights you have just when you switch your light on so that you can see everything. So we've got torch here, we have got a light bulb, we've got the, ha the lights you put on in your house when it's dark, we've also got um, car headlights as well, you need to see those as well, and street lights. So these lights help us to see everything. And Jesus, the light of the world, he sometimes, um, he chases, light chases away darkness. And when you put light on, sometimes it exposes things that you don't necessarily want to be exposed. So for example, we did Jesus, I'm the light of the world when I very first came to Maybridge. And we were at Chatsmore School and we decided to go upstairs and we made a great big den under one of the tables. And it was really dark and we took our torches and we hid under the table. Um, and then when we switched our torches on and shone around, um, I didn't know this, but on the top of the, t underneath the table where we were hiding, there was loads of really disgusting chewing gum <laughs> that somebody had chewed and then stuck under the desk. And actually that was a really good picture of what Jesus is talking about. So sometimes when we um, follow, well actually often when we follow Jesus, Jesus will shine his light into our lives and show up what isn't very nice, a bit like that horrible chewing gum. So actually, we can deal with it. We can say sorry to God and he can help us get rid of all the yucky stuff like the chewing gum under the table. The other type of lights we have are lights that warn us of danger. So we've got a lighthouse here and obviously ships could go into the rocks. So the lighthouses are there to stop ships and boats going onto the rocks. And another one traffic lights they keep us from danger they get us to stop in our cars hopefully so we don't crash into other cars and Jesus is like that as well he will stop us if we have a work on relationship with him he will help us know when we're getting into danger and when we need to stop we just need to ask him to help us and read our bibles and talk to our Christian friends and make sure we um, go to church and spend lots of time with him praying Another type of light we've got here is cat's eyes. I don't know if you've been out in the car at night and you can see these great little, they're not actual lights, they actually, it's, they're just bits of glass that reflect the car lights, but they show us the way. So these are guiding lights. And we have another one here. Here is an aeroplane. And if the runway lights weren't on, the aeroplane wouldn't know where to, la la um, to land. So these are guiding lights and Jesus can be our guide through life. And this last one that I was thinking, actually, I'm going to add this on because I think this is worth noting. I think often we use lights for fun. So here's lights on a fun fair. We have fireworks. I love fireworks. Um, also, we've got lights on a birthday cake. So sometimes lights can be used for celebration. Um, and I think that Jesus wants to celebrate with us and brings us joy in our life. So a celebratory light as well.
So those are all the different types of light. And Jesus often uses pictures that help us understand who he is. And today we're going to be thinking about the Christmas story, which seems really weird. But actually that says in Isaiah that, that a light would be sent and that light was Jesus. So when Jesus was born, that was a light entering our world and ending darkness forever. When we follow Jesus, we start to see things as they really are. And if we ask him to help us, we can make sure that we walk in his light and not the darkness. So I'm going to talk to God now so you can be quiet or close your eyes. Dear Jesus, thank you that you have come into this world. Thank you that you are our light. Help us to walk in your light and guide us in everything we do.